So she has been beloved friend of us all, and then she passed. Well, I would say she moved, she moved to the, to the new home. So we will miss her, so let us have a silent moment or a silent prayer for a while as we begin the service. Let us pray in silence. Again, welcome everybody. And then I want to give you information for you all and the uh, uh, schedule. Please uh, remember all the schedule and we have many information today. Today in the United Methodist Church, we celebrate uh, the Native Americans Ministries. So the first Sunday of May is designated uh, as the Native Americans Ministries Sunday. <coughs> Thinking about that, their needs uh, and their visions and dreams, uh, as we all know, they are suffering their current uh, life situation. So we remember specifically this day, the Native Americans. So today your Holy Communion Rail offering will be given to Native American Ministries. And your birthday offering is collected. It, it, is, it was not much. However, I made money last Friday to the South Dakota Indian School. And then they will be helped with, even though it is very small money, your offering, uh, birthday offering is used uh, to help those children. So it was sent last Friday. So your lay offering will help those Native Americans. So please do from your heart. And today after worship, we will have a potluck, monthly potluck fellowship meal. So you are invited to come. And then we are doing uh, uh, designing and planning to do Native Child Bible School, June 27th and 30th. Uh, this Wednesday meeting, we will have an evening at 6.30. And who, who is in charge? Valerie and myself. Okay. Oh, you want to mention about this? people? We're going to meet. If you're interested in helping with uh, Vacation Bible School in any way, shape, or form, Wednesday night at 6.30 here at the church. Mm -hmm. Wednesday evening, 6.30 at the church. All who are interested in and can help, please come this Wednesday, 6.30. Baby shower this Saturday, 1 o'clock p.m. in the fellowship hall to celebrate the arrival of uh, Dali, Dali Anna, Dali Anna, Anna, Mar Anna Marais, when daughter, and Luisa, the daughter, uh, who was born February 22nd this year. So ladies are invited to come to celebrate the arrival of the baby in the family. Next Sunday, we are going to celebrate Mother's Day with a special program, and you already heard the wonderful music last year, New Jolly Quartet, they will come to us, they, they will sing for us, to celebrate Mother's Day or Women's Day. So you are invited to come bring your mothers and your aunt or your anybody in your in your area um, uh, to enjoy such wonderful singing by New Georgia Quartet next Sunday. Please plan to come bring those people and then to the uh, uh, <coughs> thanks to them we are going to do love offering for the group. So please keep that in mind. And celebrate the next Sunday, Mother's Day. Okay, any, uh, oh, today, during Holy Communion, uh, there's a prayer quilt prepared by Cassandra. You will take Holy Communion first, uh, and then you will go to that quilt uh, to tie the knot, uh, remembering Teresa Tinsley. I saw her last Wednesday, and then possibly she might be back home this Tuesday, probably, almost possibly, and then doctor will give her a date to do biopsy uh, later, and she'll be back to church to get that procedure or biopsy. So probably uh, this coming Tuesday, uh, Teresa Tensley will be back to home from Vanderbilt Hospital. She has been staying here for more than three weeks, uh, and it's good for her. So. Remembering her, please tie the knot 
praying for God's mercy and grace upon her current uh, condition. Any other news, information from you to share with us? Anyone? Yes. PPR meeting Tuesday at 6. Okay. This Tuesday? This Tuesday at 6. This Tuesday, 6 o'clock. Very good PPR meeting. And all PPR members of this couple of this town uh, to have a good meeting. Any others? Any information? Okay, come on. Now, last week in the JC had a wrestling tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, three days of the dance, and she plays second, first, and second. In the three days of the dance. Okay. All right, good. Cool. <laughs> Say 
knew that was a wrestler. And I was his training dummy. <laughs> they still do the half Nelson, full Nelson. Yeah. yeah. It helped me in PE class when I had to wrestle this guy. I was 200 pounds. So. It's funny how you remember stuff like that. Okay, uh, we're going to do the greeting today. Uh, it's in your bulletin. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. To the Lord, Lord be the honor of the Lord, and the blessing, honor, glory, and might forever and ever. And your, uh, your hymn of praise, Amazing Grace, uh, all four verses, uh, number 378. Please rise in body of your spirit.
for Sister Laura and two sons, you know, they are really, really having a hard time right now. Pray for the family and uh, friends, friends and family of the pastor, Noli. And uh, I don't know why, but last Sunday when I visited her in the morning uh, before worship, I just felt that this might be the last time I see Pastor Mom. I just thought about that and then I don't know why. Anyway, I gave the scripture verses about death and eternal life. And they should die within a week by the next stroke. But according to the family, it was a good death and peaceful death. And then, yeah, Pat was ready, as you know, she quit chemotherapy, was ready to go home, the family home. That God answered her prayers. And in a sense, the family said it's a blessing uh, instead of uh, enduring severe pains by pancreatic cancer. By the mercy, she suffered only two and a half days and then she passed. So uh, it's a blessing, the family said. And I, I agree, I agree with them. And we are uh, still, anyway, losing our family members are very, very sorrowful. But from time to time, I tell the people, and actually I preached about this about a couple of years, a couple of weeks ago. Sometimes dying is a healing. Uh, so, Heshorma uh, is healed, and we are now she is beginning her eternal life in the kingdom. So we uh, praise the Lord. At this point, the service is scheduled on May 10th, Tuesday, May 10th, not this Tuesday, following Tuesday in the morning. Details are not made yet. The family is discussing about the details. But at this point, May 10th, Tuesday morning, we are going to have a memorial service here at the church. So plan to come and then remember Pat Sherman. And then we celebrate her life, a wonderful, sincere and faithful life to Jesus Christ through the service on May 10th. Please plan to come and we will have a good time with our family. But whenever people got sick, uh, people ask me to pray for them. Uh, however, you know, I, even though I pray uh, for their physical healing, primarily I pray for their spiritual healing, how they can have a good restored relationship with God and the yeah, physical healing as a secondary thing actually. So but you know passion she restored her full faith with God, died in you know, a peaceful way, blessings and good life that she had. So we celebrate her life uh, May 10th at the church. Teresa Tensley, as I told, told you, she's coming back home possibly this Tuesday and they're waiting for the schedule for biopsy. We'll be back to Mandel Hospital. So this field prayer, prayer field, will encourage her. So after you take element, please go to the table, tie a knot with your prayer and go back to your pew during Holy Communion time. We heard about the severe tornadoes in Kansas City. Uh, we heard about the thousand houses were completely uh, destroyed. Uh, about 20 people killed uh, by severe tornadoes in Wichita in Kansas City. So pray for the victims, uh, for God's mercy and grace, uh, and for God's blessings of restoration. And also, as I said, uh, today we celebrate the Native American Ministry Sunday. So pray for Native Americans uh, in this country, and for God's also blessings and See upon your lives. Okay, any other information from you? And you have to share, update anything from you? Let us know. Anyone? If not, I will lead a prayer. Now let us humbly bow and pray together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, most gracious God, and our creator and <coughs> sustainer. We thank you for gathering us again this morning, especially to commemorate Native American Ministries Sunday. We worship you. We remember the stories of your mighty 
presence upon his earth. We see you in the mountain and the valley. We see you as the sun rises in the day and as the moon rises in the night. We hear your sacred song as the river passes through the rock. Native American people have experienced your sacred presence for as long as time and memory have existed. But thank you for making your presence known to all peoples in the midst of creation. We covenant with you and with one another. We remember the example of Jesus Christ who spoke about the birds of the air and the fruit of the earth, who talked about the lilies of the field and the mustard seed. He chose a little child and a widow's night to show us the path, and he invited to his table all who were outcast and rejected. Lord, help us to remember that the covenant you have made with us, your children, also must be reflected in our relationships with each other. We remember today the ministries with Native American peoples, tribes, and communities. We commit ourselves to living out the covenant we have made with you and with one another. We commit to respect the created world in its vast variety. We commit to honor the life you create in its many shapes and forms. We commit to love brothers and sisters who are like us and who are different from us. And on this day of celebrating Native American Ministry the Sunday, we remember the beauty and dignity of your people called Native Americans. At this point, Lord, we pray for those victims by tornadoes in Kansas State. Lord, terrible things happened. And we ask your mercy and grace upon all those victims who lost their properties, lost their precious lives. Heavenly Father, be with them and strengthen them to restore this current disaster. Help us to pray for them. We pray for the family of Pastor Man. Thank you, Lord, for accepting her in your kingdom in peace. We praise you, Lord. However, still, the family and us also are very sorrowful, losing our beloved friend. So we ask your peace and comfort upon the family, upon us this morning. Be with all those sick people who are really struggling with their physical problems and issues right now. O oh God, in their troubles, let them restore the wonderful relationship with you, and that in your mercy and in your will, Lord, give them what they need. So they will praise you and give thanks to you. Oh God, accept our worship this morning. Help us to experience your presence of love in us and among us. And as you bless us, we will praise you forever. Now we continue our prayer, prayer in silence, remembering especially all those people in need. Let us pray for them in silence.
And now we pray the prayer of Jesus Christ who taught us, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Children of the scaffold, for your time with him, stay, as you sing together, Jesus loves me, this time. the most important thing to remember when you go fishing is to know where they are. You have to fish where the fish are. But how do you know where the fish are? Because, because we have a fish in different directions. Yeah. You try all everywhere. Well, there's a story in the Bible that says that some of Jesus' disciples were out fishing. And they didn't fish with poles. Back then, they, they fished with nets. nets. You're right. They just scooped the nets up. Well, they were fishing. They were fishing. They didn't catch anything. And then and this man, man they fish on yeah, this man on the bank said, "Hey, you guys, have you caught anything?" Said, no. He said, "Well, put your nets on the other side." Okay. And they, and they caught. They you know how many? Fish. How many? More than five. Too. Really? <laughs> they caught. 153 fish just by throwing their nets on the other side. And you know what they realized when they did that? They realized that that man was Jesus. Jesus. That he knew where the fish were. And then they went back to shore and Jesus cooked the fish for them and they ate breakfast. Do you ever eat fish for breakfast? I don't either. But that's what they did then. And they had a, a good time with Jesus. This was after he had uh, risen from the dead well, my dad has. and they felt really blessed and where I think the most important thing about fishing is knowing where the fish are the point of this story is trusting the one who knows where the fish are and the one who knows where the fish are or who knows everything is Jesus you can always trust what you think he's telling you let's have a prayer dear father Dear Father, we know we know that you have wonderful blessings that you have wonderful blessings for us for us when we follow Jesus when we follow Jesus our prayer our prayer is that we will always follow you is that we will always follow you Amen Amen
1162, and we'll do verses 1 through 3 with the response. <laughs> Gracious Father, we didn't come to you with empty hands. We brought our offerings. And we put our giving spirit and our heart in our offerings. Accept them, O Lord, and use them for your kingdom of love on earth. In Jesus' name we give. Remember our family and the 
Okay, scriptures today, we're going to do Acts 9, verses 1 through 6. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Now, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you'll be told what to do. The next Testament lesson, number two, is Revelations. Chapter, yeah, chapter 5. Oops. Sorry, it's taking me a while. Uh, then I look and heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered merits of merits and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice. Were these the land that was slaughtered and received power and wealth, wisdom and might, honor, glory, and blessing? Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, all them that is in them, singing to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor, glory, and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. And the gospel lesson is John 21, 1 through 14. Oh, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called twin, Nathaniel of Gana and Galilee, the son of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? And they answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they, they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. Right. When they got ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some fish that you may just... You just caught it. And Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was Jesus. It was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This is now the third time Jesus had appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jim. We'll be reading the scripture. Yes. How do you think people reacted when Simon Peter and the other disciples returned from their fishing trip with the tales of seeing the risen Jesus? Don't you imagine that fox just shook their heads and said, Fishermen cannot believe a word they say. But we must take into account that the disciples were just as surprised as everyone else to see Jesus. That's the last thing they expected that night when they headed out. To fish. A visitor to a small town watched an old man fishing quietly in a shallow stream. 
For a half hour, there was no sign of activity, and finally, the visitor walked over and said, It doesn't look as though there are any fish in this stream. No, said the old fellow, there ain't. There must be object of fishing here, the visitor asked. The object, replied the old man, is to show my wife I have no time to peel potatoes. <laughs> what was the object of going out fishing at night? Well, most of the disciples were originally fishermen. That was their occupation when Jesus called them to follow him. Well, let's look back at a similar story in the book of Luke, chapter 5. Jesus is preaching and teaching by a lake and he joins a group of fishermen in their boat. After a disappointing night of fishing, the men were heading back to shore. But Jesus challenged them to head into deeper water and try again. And they obeyed and caught so many fish that their net works. These simple fishermen became Jesus' first disciples. Over the next three, three years, these fishermen saw Jesus preach, teach, perform miracles, and turn the established order upside down. Imagine their sorrow when, at the height of his ministry, Jesus is arrested and crucified. What are they going to do now? Then, just as they were giving in to fear and confusion, Jesus appeared to them, undeniably alive and full of power, and announces that he has conquered death. So, after this amazing turn of events, why? Why are the disciples out fishing again? When our worldview has been turned upside down, our first reaction is to retreat into our comfort zone. It's not unusual under such circumstances, to want to return to the familiar. Maybe the disciples needed the time to clear their heads, the soothing rocking of the boat, the briny odor of sea water, the rough feel of the net in their callous hands. These things were comforting to Simon Peter and the others. And they needed this time in the comfort zone to sort out their thoughts and emotions. But how tempting it is to stay in that comfort zone. As someone said, the most tiring exercise in the world is carrying yesterday on your back. That's what the disciples were struggling with, carrying yesterday on their backs. Each one had doubted Jesus' word. Each one had given up hope after Christ's crucifixion. And Simon Peter had to deal with the biggest burden of all. He had denied Jesus three times. So, he and his friends had retreated to the comfort zone. But they were not going to stay there for long. Because Jesus' call to us is always a call to leave our comfort zone. That's the second thing we need to see this day. Jesus always called us from our comfort zone. 
It's like a goal the inspirational saying, like uh, no pain, no gain, or no cross, uh, no crown, and when the going gets tough, the tough get going, etc. There is a list of slightly more honest sayings for office world. Number one, the beatings will continue until morale improves. Number two, when the going gets tough, the tough take a coffee break. Three, aim low, reach your goals, avoid disappointment. Many people live their lives according to that last motto. Aim low, reach your goals, avoid disappointment. But when Jesus called us, it is to head out into deep waters, to get out of our comfort zone, to let down our net on the other side of the boat, to trust that is leading us into something greater than the life we used to, to know. There is a great story about a young man from Camden, Arkansas named David Pryor. Pryor worked as a teenager in Washington, D.C. as a congressional page of boy. Pryor loved the job so much he vowed to return to Washington someday as a member of Congress. In fact, David Pryor hid a dime in a crack behind a statue in the U.S. Capitol with the intention of retrieving it when he achieved his dream. Fifteen, fifteen years later, as a newly elected member of the House of Representatives, he did just that. Prior said, his experience proves two things. One, that dreams in youth should never be underestimated. And two, that they do not clean the capital very much. <laughs> David Pryor had a dream, a dream that required him to give his best. You do not achieve anything significant in life without leaving your comfort zone, without stretching toward high and lofty goals, without giving your all. This is to say that after an encounter with Christ, you cannot just go back to your old way of life. That's why many of us are not finding joy in our walk with Christ. We are trying to live the same way we lived before we became conscious of His work in our lives. And it cannot be done. When you give your heart to Christ, you seek to live out Christ's message. Author Joseph Campbell writes, We must be willing to get rid of the life we have planned so as to have the life that is waiting for us. Jesus' disciples had to learn this lesson. We have to learn this lesson. There's a life we have constructed for ourselves, and then there is a life that Jesus is calling us to. And they are rarely the same. And so, as the disciples drift along on the sea at night, catching nothing, expecting nothing, Jesus appears to them again. This is a disciples' golden hour, even if they did not realize it. This is the hour that will change their lives forever. This is the hour when everything would begin to fall in place for them. Jesus appears to them and challenges them 
to throw their net on the other side of the water. And the harvest of fish which they reap is beyond their wildest dreams. If there is one totally predictable theme in the Bible, it is this. Blessing, blessings follow obedience. Okay, blessings follow obedience. The disciples obey, and suddenly they catch a boatload of fish. In this moment, Jesus was, rich. Jesus was recalling, recalling his disciples. He was recommissioning them to go out with renewed commitment to spread the good news. It is a decision time for these rugged fishermen. Actress and the choreographer for the famous Broadway musical Oklahoma, Agnes D. Billy, once said, no trumpet sound when the important decisions of our life are made. Destiny is made known silently. That is where the disciples are. They are on the edge of returning, of returning to their old way of life. Now is the time to decide. Will they return to fishing or will they commit to being fishers of men? Management consultant Peter Drucker says that there are four kinds of risks. Risk. One kind of risk is the risk you simply must take. You have no other options. A second kind of risk is one you can afford to take. You calculate the cost and it is worth it. The third kind of risk is a risk you cannot afford to take. The result would be too disastrous. And fourth is a risk you cannot afford not to take. It is a risk to respond to Jesus' call. But obviously, it is a risk that the disciples cannot afford not to take. Full of joy, they begin rowing toward the shore to greet Jesus. Simon Peter doesn't even wait for the boat. He jumps into the water and swims to meet Christ. This is it. From this time forward, there would be no turning back for these disciples. No longer would they be fishermen, but now they would be fishers of men. There is a classic story that comes out of humorist Robert Bentley's college days. For one of Bentley's final examinations, he was to write an essay on fishy hatcheries. He hadn't cracked a book all semester. Undaunted, he started his final exam something like this. Much voltage has been devoted to fishy hatcheries. No one, no one, however, has ever covered this subject from the point of view of the fish. And this he proceeded to do in what is probably the most entertaining final exam in the history of Harvard University. We have looked at this Bible passage from the perspective of the disciples. Now, Let's look at it from the point of view of the fish, because that is who we are. That's right. We are the fish, the net represent the unity of the disciples and of the church. 
and the fish represent all the souls who will be brought to salvation by the witness of the disciples. And that includes you and me. If these disciples had stayed in their comfort zone, you and I would never have heard the gospel. We are their harvest, their catch, their reward for leaving their boat to teach and preach and lead others to Jesus Christ. Now, are you satisfied to stay in your comfort zone? It's all right if you want. But there is a more satisfying life awaiting you if you are willing to seek something greater. To be his disciple, to be his follower, to seek to turn the world right side up to his glory. Today is Holy Communion Sunday, and then I want to ask you to turn your hymn to page uh, 12. So. Well, actually, let's go to 13, the Great Thanksgiving. Page 13, the great thanksgiving, the Lord with you. Lift up your heart. Lift your heart Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord. Holy are you and blessed is your Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and make with us a new covenant, made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the supper of over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of this, your body and Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is alive, Christ is risen, Christ is Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them before us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through us and Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church our honor and glory to yours almighty Father now and forever Amen well, Still we are under the threat of a virus so I'm going to wear a mask and glove for your safety Page 14 the Great Thanksgiving
This is the body of Christ, broken for you. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you. Our table is open to everybody, regardless of any differences of anything. We are family of God. We are the children of God. You deserve to come forward to this table to take this body and blood. As we celebrate the Meet to America Ministry Sunday, as we take the bread and cup, remember them, their needs and their dreams. So your special offering for them will be very, very appreciated. After taking bread and cup, uh, please go to their table for prayer. Please for Teresa Tinsley, tie your knot with your prayer for her, and then you may go get your shoes. Please make your hands cup, cup your hands, and then she will place the cup beside uh, you on the rail, and then you will take it. Now, please come forward and take a holy, holy communion and give thanks to God. Body of Christ broken for you. 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 Go in peace, go in death, Jesus Christ is with you always, and he will take care of you. Now, you are dismissed.
Loving God, you have given us a share in the one bread and the one cup and made us one in Christ. Help us to bring your salvation and joy to all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you for coming. Again, uh, emphasize you again. Uh, next Sunday is a special program. You will be blessed by wonderful Christian singing group, You Journey Quartet. And then we have designed to have to, that group to celebrate Mother's Day and Christian Women's Day. So you are invited, especially all women and females, I would say, please to come, bring your friends, to let them all blessed by beautiful music. <clears throat> and also after worship, the fellowship hall, we will have a fellowship meeting. Thank you for coming today, and then we are going to close our service with a hymn number 453, More Love to the O Christ, the verses 1, 2, and 4, we will sing, Rise, if you are able to sing together. <laughs>
and colors journey with us now into the wide world scatter us to the four directions that we might live and love as your children let us be a blessing to every path we may cross and bring us back together when the time is right may the blessings of god be upon you all upon those who are struggling with their physical issues spiritual issues upon those by victims by tornadoes in Kansas State and those people in Ukraine in the war now and forever. <laughs>